Let us look at the present disease burden globally and in India. In the year 2016, there were an estimated 10.4 million incident cases all over the world. Of them, about 2.8 million occurred in India alone, making it the highest TB burden country in terms of absolute number of incident cases. At the global level, the incident rate per 100,000 population was 140, while it was in excess of 210 in India. Although there are other some uh, countries in the African region, specifically the sub-Saharan Africans where HIV is highly pandemic, the incidence rates in excess of 300 per 100,000 were observed. This slide shows that India is included in all the three high burden lists for overall TB1, 2 HIV associated TB, 3 drug resistant TB. Each of these lists contains the list of 30 high burden countries and India is included in all the three. Overall, India contributes about 25 percent of TB burden in terms of incidence as well as mortality for all the three uh, types of TB that is all TB, HIV associated TB and drug resistant TB. Now, how did we estimate this uh, incidence to 2.8 million in India? Primarily, estimation of burden is a complex process. Several groups of individuals work on generating data on dis different disease aspects of the disease. Another group of people work through transmission modeling and epidemiological modeling to find out the missing data and arrive at the best estimates of TB disease burden in terms of incidence, prevalence and mortality. The current estimates of incidence in TB are based on this formula where incidence is calculated as prevalence divided by duration. The prevalence was considered as that obtained during the statewide recently conducted survey in Gujarat and duration was estimated using transmission modeling. At the global level, TB ranks ninth in the cause of mortality. About 1.3 million deaths are attributed to TB and there are additional 0.4 TB associated deaths in PLHIV. In India, TB is the sixth leading cause of death accounting for 5.4 percent of all deaths. More than 400,000 people die in India every year. However, the mortality rate is highly variable from state to state starting from the lowest at 8 per 100,000 in Kerala to 58 per 100,000 in Uttar Pradesh. How did we estimate the deaths? The estimation of death is primarily based on data generated during vital registration data, sample registration surveys, verbal autopsy data as well as the uh, medical certification of cause of death. These uh, data is corrected for garbage coding and the modeling is applied to see that the sum of individual cause mortality equals all cause mortality and then uh, some sort of regression is generated so that the trends in incidence mortality and prevalence of TB are consistent with each other. Fraction of TB mortality in PLHIV is estimated from vital registration data of overall mortality in PLHIV and the proportion of PLHIV that suffer from TB. Case fatality ratio is another key epidemiological indicator of TB closes and it represents the sum product of your case finding efficiency and the treatment efficiency. In India, about 17 percent of the incident cases succumb to the disease compared to 16 percent at the global level and we have to reduce this case fatality rate to less than 6 percent if we have to achieve the targets as envisaged under the NTV strategy. This map shows the areas where 10 some national surveys were carried out recently. One of them was the state level survey that is in Gujarat, other were district level surveys and 
you can see here that the estimated prevalence varied widely in different regions and the overall summary estimate of infectious TB that is bacteriologically positive pulmonary TB was 350 per 100,000 population at the national level and which was the pooled prevalence. Therefore, at any given point of time there are 3 million infectious cases which are transmitting infection to the community. The overall prevalence corrected for childhood TB and extra pulmonary TB was estimated at 300 per 100,000 population. Okay. This slide shows that the prevalence rate increases as the age increases and the ratio of male to female prevalence is 2 to 6 in various sites. This ratio also increases with increase in age group. The first ever state level disease burden estimates for every disease and risk factor in India were disseminated on 14th November this year. According to these estimates, TB is the fifth leading cause of loss of dalis in empowered action group states. It is the sixth leading cause in northeastern states and thirteenth leading cause in other states. Basically, disability adjusted life years, the dalis measure disease burden in terms of lives lost estimated in years and the years lost because of disability. The overall prevalence of HIV in incident TB cases was estimated at 10 percent in the global level and in India it was 3 percent. Recently India has carried out a national level survey to estimate prevalence of drug resistance in TB cases according to which 2.8 percent of new cases and 12 percent of previously treated cases were found to have either multi drug resistance TB that is resistance to INH as well as rifampicin or resistance to rifampicin alone. Now, these estimates show that though the overall proportion of patients who suffer from MDR RR TB has not increased over the years, but the data also shows higher prevalence of drug resistance in younger age groups compared to the older age groups, which shows that active transmission is now ongoing in the community and we should expect higher proportions in the coming years. Now, let us look at what has been the trend, what have been the trends in the burden of disease globally and India level. Now, since the onset of DOTS based disease control programs, the upper graph show that the incidence of TB as well as the mortality have seen a significant decline in last 15 to 17 years. However, the decline is not so significant in terms of absolute number of deaths that takes place every year or the absolute number of incident cases that arise every year. And this is primarily because of the effect of increasing population size, change in age structure as well as increase in the prevalence of certain risk factors like diabetes mellitus. To understand the impact what RNDCP had, just a recollection that RNDCP was initiated in India during 1997 and expanded in a phased manner to cover the entire uh, 100 percent population geographically by 2006. The programmatic management of drug resistant TB was initiated in 2007 and it in, uh, attained 100 percent geographic coverage by 2015. Now, we have to keep in mind that 100 percent coverage does not mean that RNDCP was able to detect 100 percent cases in the community. Now, this is one of the modeling outputs in which I have been involved, which shows that if there was no RNTP, the mortality rates as represented by the red band would have increased over the years. What RNDCP has done is that it has helped us to decrease the mortality rate per 100,000 population from something like 75 when we started with RNDCP to something like 34 in the year 2015. There, therefore, there has been more than 50 percent reduction in mortality rates as a result of RNDCP. All this has resulted in saving of 7 million deaths, 5.5 million because of 
uh, drugs sensitive TB and 1.5 million because of MDR TB. And 40 percent of this reduction is a result of indirect effect by means of reducing transmission by attaining higher cure rates. You can see that of the MDR TB dyes that were saved 50 percent are because of indirect effect that is because of reduced transmission there are fewer cases who were given first line treatment and so lesser number of incident MDR TB cases and so lesser number of MDR TB deaths. This highlights the importance of preventing MDR TB as well as curing MDR TB. Now, initial years of RNTCP saw a decline in prevalence and incidence, but after that the model shows that the rates have stabilized. These are again primarily the increasing population size and the life expectancy and prevalence of diabetes primarily, which work in direction opposite to that of RNTCP as far as the trends are concerned. We have conducted two rounds of annual risk of TB infection surveys, which showed a 4 percent decline in transmission of infection every year. However, in good program conditions, we expect the decline to be somewhere around 10 percent per year. 1 percent of people get infected every year, which means that there are 13 million new infections per year. Compare it with the new HIV infections, which are estimated to be less than 100,000 per year. At any point of time, there are 400 million people who are harboring the tubercle bacilli in their bodies and they are liable to break down to TB and this, therefore, new TB cases will keep emerging in the community for a number of years to come. So, where do we go from here? The NTB strategy has a vision of zero TB deaths. The targets as envisaged under the NTB strategy are reduction in the number of TB mortality in terms of absolute number of people that die from TB every year by 90 percent compared to 2015 levels, reduction in the incidence by 80 percent compared to 2015 levels and the government of India envisages to attain these targets 5 years earlier that is 2025. Presently, the TB incident is declining slowly, but if we use the current tools which are available to judiciously, also provide universal coverage with good quality services to private patients as well. The quality of treatment should be as good as that is provided in the uh, public sector, then we will be able to hasten the speed of decline by about 10 percent per year. However, that alone will not be sufficient to attain the targets of eliminating TB from India or globally and probably the efforts are on and we will have a new vaccine say by the year of 2025, which will help us to again further increase the uh, slope to about 17 percent per year. Slide also shows the importance of latent TB uh, treatment infection starting from 2025, but then we do not have to wait till 2025. For example, as I mentioned earlier that LTBA treatment that is latent TB uh, infection can be initiated even now among all the household contacts and in other highest group of uh, people who suffer from TB. Therefore, the key messages of the session on TB epidemiology today were that TB continues to be a major cause of morbidity and mortality. The systematic screening among patient groups at high risk of having TB is highly recommended. However, provision of quality TB services under the public sector alone will not be able to achieve the goal of TB elimination. Therefore, universal coverage with quality TB care need to be extended to private patients as well. Our quest for new innovative tools like a new vaccine continues and hopefully we will have one in near future. Addressing biosocial determinants of TB is as important as TB case detection and treatment to achieve the targets of NTB strategy. Thank you so much.